Hello, everyone. Um, my name is Phil. I work for OpenAI, where I manage the kernel libraries, which includes both the uh, kernel team, which is, includes both libraries and compilers. Some of you may know me as the author of the Triton language, uh, which I will talk about today. <clears throat> so um, briefly, like why do, did we even need to create a new language in the first place? Um, <clears throat> so back in the days, people wrote a lot of CUDA, and CUDA is great because it's super flexible, but it's not very simple. So one very good thing about CUDA is uh, if you're a CUDA developer, you can pretty much do whatever you want um, on your GPU. Uh, and that allows you to squeeze the very last bits of performance um, that you might need. And that also allows you to use pretty much whatever data structure you want. Like you can have trees or linked lists or um, heaps or anything you want in CUDA. Um, the drawback, though, is developers can do whatever they want. So um, this means that performance optimizations is super cumbersome, takes forever. Um, also means that code bases tend to become super complex and hard to maintain over time. Uh, I don't know if anyone in this room has had to manage like a large CUDA code base, but it's not a fun thing uh, when a new GPU comes out. And perhaps most importantly, algorithms in CUDA are very, very opaque to researchers. Uh, so really like you have this high level API and if you want to delve, delve into the details of how things work or fix a bug, you're pretty much out of luck if you don't know CUDA. Uh, <clears throat> graph compilers, on the other hand, uh, I would say take the reverse approach and they're very simple, but that comes at the cost of some flexibility. So obviously the very large uh, advantage to them is it offers very fast iteration speeds for researchers. So if you have a new idea, you can prototype it super quickly and you'll be very happy. Uh, on the other hand, uh, there's many ideas that you might not be able to represent uh, in graph compilers. So I talked about custom data structures before. That's an example. Sometimes you have like control flow inside of your MATML, or in, in the loop, inner loop of your MATML that's also very hard to represent efficiently. Um, and also just generally code generation is a difficult problem. Um, so sometimes like even when IDs can be represented, uh, the code generated is not as fast as hand-tuned uh, kernels with custom operators. Uh, and Triton is sort of a way to say, we'll try to do something in between that's gonna be simpler than CUDA, yet more expressive than graph compilers. So maybe in a few days, you'll be able to do what would take you weeks uh, or months in CUDA. Uh, maybe you'll be able to write algorithms that are out of the scope of uh, graph compilers, like uh, Redix sorting or walking a tree or things like that. Uh, but also, um, the code will still be like legible, and researchers will be able to read through it and understand it and modify it. Uh, we also want it to be performance portable, which is a big characteristic of the graph compilers. Um, yeah, and because it's lower level than graph compilers, there's this idea that like if you spend enough time on your custom operator, operators and your kernels, um, you will at least guess, get the same performance as a graph compiler. <clears throat> on the other hand, and the flip side of the coin is that it's uh, way less expressive than CUDA, and it's also more complicated than graph compilers. Uh, so um, it means that your code will be at most as fast as the best CUDA. Um, but in general, like if you spend enough time on your CUDA, uh, it will be faster that way. And it also means that you will iterate slower than if you use a, a graph compiler when it's applicable. So no free lunch here. Um, now briefly to talk about what is Triton because I don't have too much time, but one way to think about Triton is it's very similar to Torch, except that your tensors are in, living in the SRAM of your uh, hardware. Um, and, but you can still modify them like you'd modify torch operators. <clears throat> but that means that whenever you have a, a Triton tensor in your, in your program, then you can be pretty much guaranteed that accessing it and doing operations on it will be very fast because it will, or, it will be already living locally on your chip. Um, one like important uh, feature of Triton is that it supports pointers. Uh, so you can have tensors of pointers and you can dereference them and that's going to bring tensors of values in, in SRAM. Uh, one uh, limitation of Triton today is there's shape constraints. So tensors have to, uh, tensor shapes have to be powers of two along all dimensions. 
which can be constraining, but in general is okay because you deal with uh, tiles of data. Uh, <coughs> so um, here's a very uh, brief matrix replication example. So um, essentially the way you do it at a high level, I won't spend too much time on it, but you're multiplying a matrix A by a matrix B. Um, and you want to specify a Triton program to compute the tile of the matrix C, which is the output. And at a high level, the way you'll do it is you'll define uh, ties of pointers for uh, A and ties of pointers for B. And then in a loop, uh, well, first of all, you'll accumulate, you'll initialize your accumulator for the result. And then in a loop, you'll uh, dereference the pointers element-wise, uh, multiply the two ties that you get advance the pointers, uh, and then rinse and repeat until your result is computed. Uh, there's a bunch of subtleties, but if you do that, uh, here in green I've shown the performance of uh, Kublai's 12.4. Uh, and uh, if you do that in a like sort of naive way with tensors of pointers and everything, um, you can get like pretty good performance on H100 with FP8 when your matrices are large enough. But the performance is pretty bad when the matrices are small especially along the reduction dimension. Over the past year, we've done a lot of work to improve that, uh, and our latest results, which require tweaking the kernels, show that you can actually be uh, faster than Kublas uh, if you write your kernel the right way. Uh, and this is H100 with FP8. Uh, there's similar things on MI300. If you write the kernel the right way, you can also get like uh, performance that's very comparable to, uh, <clears throat> to what you'd get with handwritten kernels for that architecture. Uh, this, is, this was presented at the Triton conference yesterday. And uh, on Intel, it's uh, also the same story. Like, you can get very close to, uh, to the performance that, that you'd be able to get um, with handwritten kernels. Um, now I want to spend a couple of minutes talking about how it helped us at OpenAI. So as, as I mentioned, I manage not only the part that maintains Triton, but also the part that uses Triton to write kernels for our biggest uh, large language models, uh, which includes uh, GPT-4 and beyond. Uh, and Triton has been a huge uh, saving grace uh, for the team. Um, and I think the, the one point in which it has helped a lot is it has allowed us to offload kernel development to researcher. Uh, so before we had Triton, uh, the kernels team sort of have a, a maintenance burden that grew uh, linearly with the number of researchers uh, that needed kernel and the number of GPUs that we needed to support. Um, and this wasn't great, but the idea is that if you, if you have something like Triton, then a lot of the burden is shifted to compiler developers, and uh, users can uh, write their own kernel, and, and you can work more in a self-serving way. So one way I like to think about it is the base maintenance burden is very high because you have to maintain a compiler, and obviously it's not to scale here. But there's some point when your company is big enough that it's, it's the better approach to do if you want to scale. Um, of course, you can always hire more. And the way I think about hiring is it can allow you to like, uh, decrease the slope of your uh, maintenance burden or decrease the, the base uh, if you maintain a compiler. But uh, as you scale large enough, it doesn't really matter either way. Um, another thing that uh, I really loved about Triton, and this is my favorite meme, but um, Technical debt is a very big problem in large um, kernel libraries, mostly because every time a new hardware comes out, basically like nobody wants to maintain the old code. It's not fun to work on anymore, um, but there's still a lot of people who have to use it. And so this code sort of just dies out slowly. Um, but with Triton, uh, we've been able to, to be in a, in a better situation there where uh, the old code is the maintenance bur burden of the old code is, is close to zero. Um, and finally, um, well, one last thing I would summarize in terms of how we think about Triton is it allows you to get a great performance quickly, but if you really want the absolute peak performance, Triton is probably not the right tool for you. Uh, so maybe the difference is a little bit as the difference between CUDA and SAS. Like, you can always write assembly, and it's always going to be the fastest. Uh, but Another thing you can do is you can write CUDA and, and leave some performance off the table about getting more productivity. And similarly, you can also go to Triton and you leave maybe a little bit more performance on the table in the general case, not in the hyper optimal case, um, but you gain a lot of productivity. Uh, yeah. Thank you all. <laughs>